Charles Mulley is with us this morning. And would you, yes. God has not only moved in his life in tremendous ways, but God has seen fit to raise him up and use him to transform countless lives uh, in, with street children in Kenya, but also given him global influence. There has been a documentary made about this man. There has been a Hollywood movie made about this man. God continues to give him a platform to share the message of Jesus Christ and influence uh, serving some of the people who are in most need and where Christ is least known around the world. We are so thrilled, Charles, that you're with us this morning. And so I would invite you to... Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Well, thank you, Pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy uh, to be here uh, today, uh, together with my wife, who is seated there at the left corner. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, today we have um, the topic about following Jesus as disciples and what does it mean to be a disciple. And before that I would like also to talk a little bit of what God has been doing over the years. A Molly Children family has been existing over the last 30 years, and uh, in those years, it has been not bread and butter. In the beginning of the ministry, we had a problem with our friends as well as the church uh, that uh, being going to the street, be friendly to thieves, robbers, street women, and girls, children, dirty, those who were taking drugs. It was an offense for a church to look somebody who was a leader in a church and being admired by many people. When I chose and when God directed me to do and start ministering to the children, to the young people, to the street drillers, that was the, now the beginning of great, great war and an enmity which came in because they did not know Charles Muley was going to all these people to do what? Why leaving big business and then go to be with the sinners? God gave me the vision and I told the church, the leader, the pastors, there was no way that I could turn back. It was only forward. Love those dirty people, those evil doers, and bring them through prayer and through the word of God for them to know the truth of Jesus Christ. Because even Jesus himself, when we look at the Bible, he came to save and bring together people, show them the way, what our Father in heaven, what he loves. And he was humiliated and he went that far to say, yes, Lord, be glorified, even though I've been nailed at the cross. That's what Jesus said. Jesus came so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Showing us the way is us being able to live together in harmony with love, helping others, and be able to tell them the way of the Lord without fear. And we, it gave us a responsibility to bear fruit, and that when we live in this world, we have always to expect persecution. Uh, we are not special. And through those deep uh, persecutions, through the evil one and those gangs around the world, those who does not even want to hear about the word of God. You're going to school that you find parents 
and even the management, they don't want the, the children to be told about Christianity. That love being shaken through the evil one, we are told that it will never end. Our part is to stand firm and say, yes, Lord, give us the strength. Give us that love to love our enemies. It's not easy somebody who has done so much wrong or killed, persecuted our churches in Africa, in the world. It is not easy to forgive those kind of people. But we need to go to them and tell them Jesus loved them. And no matter how, they, uh, God will touch them. The, um, being a disciple is not easy. Because a disciple is someone who is a follower. A disciple must be a follower, a believer, a servant with a purpose. Uh, because without that purpose, you cannot be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is or she is an implementer of service, uh, service delivery on behalf of someone, a boss, Jesus, up there with trust in him. And uh, a perfect example are the 12 disciples, those who were chosen um, by him when he was in the world, he was pointing one, one at a time, and they became 12. And he said, you will suffer. And it was not going to be smooth, it was going to be tough, but as a follower of me, Jesus, when he said, then I will be with you. I'll give you a heart of being able to overcome. And you know, in um, Matthew chapter 28, verse 16, and the 20, this talked more about the, the commission of these disciples and all of them being told by Jesus to go all over the world and be able to preach without fear, with the diligence to all the people everywhere. And those who come to the Lord, baptize them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. And that was so. In Luke chapter 14, verse 25 and onward, it brings us to when Jesus was speaking to a large crowd, and those people kept on following him. And he said one day, you are following me, and I want to share you with something. And that large crowd of people were following him because they knew there was love, there was providence of food, of healing, of casting demons, evil spirit being cast out. And they saw that light, and through that light, they were able to be satisfied with life. They believed in him, most of them, when they followed him. How does one become a good disciple of Christ Jesus? How does one? It is, they, of course, must be connected uh, through prayer. The grace of God continue to seal everything. And they must also possess the following spirit of humility, spirit of brokenness. We must have spirit of forgiveness. Forgiving each other, forgiving our friend for anything, and that's where we go wrong, that we carry small things that troubles us about our daughter-in-laws or our son-in-laws or even our grandchildren, our friends. Somebody did something and you carry it. And that one takes you to hell because you are supposed to forgive as Jesus gave us our sin and the entire world. 
And forgiveness, the spirit of forgiveness, is something that we cannot find from another place. We have to pray and pray that God give us harmony and surrender and be able to be uh, humbled so that we can also forgive others. We have also the spirit of calmness, to be calm. Why are you worried all the time? Worried every day? And for how long will you be able to continue with that journey of worry and worry? We need to be calm. And also a spirit of gratitude, appreciation, appreciating other people, appreciating your own children, your father, your mom. Thank you. Thank you, mom. You brought me up, this up to where I am. Dad, you have taken me to school. You are caring and you are good. I want to thank you. This spirit of gratitude is so much needed within our journey. And even when we are persecuted and when we think that the world does not love us anymore, there is war here and there, we need to stand with that spirit of calmness, spirit of gratitude and appreciation, and the Lord will bless us more. A spirit of awfulness in Jesus, being awful. Yes, I know, tomorrow, I know today, I know even now, Jehovah, through his son Jesus Christ, he lives. Jesus lives in my heart, in my life, and that one will continue to give you grace and love and the peace. Spirit or peace is paramount because we need peace every moment. When we lead people in the church, we do everything. When we are at home, we need that spirit of God and that will continue to unite us with the spirit of God, with our Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit will be connected. What is expected of good disciple of Jesus. It's a, we, it is expected that Jesus must always be our focus as we fellowship and break the bread with other brethren. Thus, when people will see what we expect, then Number two, we must have faith. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. And uh, three, be humble. Be humble in spirit. We don't become humble just to pretend or show people, oh, we are humble. But the, our character, our behaviors of following Jesus and the way we respond to authority, the way we respond to God and uh, our own families, our own friends should show that humility. S number four, surrender all to God and let his will be done in your life, in my life. That is what is expected of a good disciple of Jesus Christ. In Kenya, about a month ago, it came in the television. A group of people had raised up and said that they want the, our national anthem, O oh God of creation. He said, they said, put it off, take it out, uh, O oh God. And they said that so even in schools in Kenya, they should not teach about Christianity. It was really uh, strange uh, to hear people, and they are Africans. But um, the churches met again together, and they said through the television that we should not honor words of threats from such a small group of people who want people to get married, men to men, women to women, 
and that they have borrowed this, this ideology from the Western world that they are being paid money to spread at trade, to separate the church of Christ. And they said, the Christian said, leaders, no, no, we will not. And uh, um, as we talk now, we didn't hear those people uh, coming back again uh, to say the Christians need to do this and this. So we need to, as a church, to unite and to say no to evil because that would really help us to grow. When we say no, it's no. Because Jesus was against sin. But what he did, he prayed for the sinners. He gave them real um, strong words of life because he was life. And he said to them, follow me. Uh, whoever is thirsty, come to me. I'll give you free, free water. I want to thank each one of you for listening, but also a good servant take up that nature of Christ and be humbled as he humbled him unto to the death. And we must be doers. We must be doers of the word. And only, not only to be hearers, but to be the doers of the word. James chapter 1, verse 22, it illustrate very, 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 very much and very well. And you know, we may think that we have no faith, but our big God blesses our small faith. Our big God blesses our small faith. And therefore, with God, through Christ Jesus, all things are possible through him. May the Lord bless you and uh, give you the strength and the energy to fight the evil one because it's only him <clears throat> who has got power. This world has got nobody who is powerful. We talk about America, the powerful nation, China. We talk about those, Russia. We talk about other countries, those who are very powerful. That is not power. The power remains with God whom we trust. And when we trust in him, when we obey him, he will give us complete package uh, within our life with our dear sisters, our children, and with everybody, including our friends, even our enemies, we shall know how do we testify that Jesus is Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much uh, for this morning, God, you have given unto us. Being together the way we are, we cannot take it for granted. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you will unite us with a cord that cannot be, bro be broken. And that means being able to pray for one another, encourage one another, and to move forward uh, together and uh, be able to bless others, to love you, Lord, and even to bless others who are far and those who are our enemies. Uh, today is the day to remember to pray for churches which are being persecuted and the missionaries are, are around the world. Uh, Lord, I bring all this to you. May you cover them with the precious blood of Jesus Christ Wherever they are, Lord, they will feel your presence. They will never be dismayed or fear, but they will stand there because our God never sleep. You will be there for them, and you will be there uh, for their children, and you will take care of them. Lord, those who are suffering and those who are in uh, uh, great uh, starvation, like in Kenya, lack of food, Lord, we pray that you will do um, great things and miracles according to your riches and glory and the food will be there and the rain will continue for the rest of the months until 
when your people will have a bumper up harvest to feed their children, to feed their people. We thank you, Lord, for Canada. We pray for people church. I pray for the senior pastor, the other pastors, the worship team, and the, 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 those who are in the, in the management. Lord, I pray and I commit to them that you will give them the unity to be united in Christ Jesus and the church will grow both spiritually and also in number. And Father, I pray for special blessings uh, that uh, you will open their eyes to see you and to focus and be determined in whatever they do and they will know that you will provide uh, what is needed, the wisdom, the knowledge and the skills uh, to uh, run and organize the church to grow for your honor and the glory. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our services are recorded at the People's Church in Toronto, Canada. If you live in the GTA or plan on visiting, please join us. We'd love to meet you. 